Let's bring out our, our next guest. He is a uh, Hall of Famer. He is the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Woo! Introduction? No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> sitting to my left. Oh, you should be sorry to tell you. The million dollar champion, Ted DiBiase! Woo! Woo! And you have a prize for the million dollar man. <laughs> Great to be here, though. That's it? <laughs> I think we remember a lot of things. Oh, man, are you kidding me? That's a little bit so intense. Who, who's, uh, whose idea was it for the million dollar dream? One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite finishing maneuvers. Well, actually, my idea was like, uh, you know, as a baby face, and actually, I really was a baby face. I was in Mid South, you know, I had the little glove, I loaded the glove, knocked out everybody. And so I wanted to have something that I could put on everybody. You know, I figured if I'm wrestling guys, if I'm going to wrestle my comrades at night, I can't see what I'm So you want something you can put on everybody. So the Lady Old Green is really the same mold that Sergeant Slaughter used. Did you have to ask like Sergeant Slaughter permission? Is that no, a thing? He was gone. He was gone. He was gone. <laughs> <Screw him. laughs> so it's modified to Uh And then something that I always thought was pretty awesome was you would shove. Was it hundred dollar bills or a dollar bill? Hundred dollar bills down people's throats. Like, usually like the scrubs, right? It's kind of like you know, uh, you know. I used to watch Terry Funk. He was a big uh, influence in my career. And Terry. You know, he's a cowboy, right? The Western guy, as a heel, he, he didn't actually really do this, but he would take a brand and iron, you know, he, he put his brand on people after he beat him, right? So I thought it was a pretty good idea. I said, how about I just stuff a hundred dollar bill for that somebody? People ask me all the time. I said, did you really do that? I said, yes. I said, but what you don't realize is that every time the camera went off, I got that hundred dollar bill back. <laughs> <laughs> so then, they got the camera man all right. So that, that would be your hundred dollar bill. Like, which would slip you one as you go out and uh, Now, you know, I, I give a lot of money away, but it was all business money. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's just remarkable, uh, this character, the gimmick. I mean, they actually did say, he said, now, if you abuse this, you're going to lose it. He said, but for example, he said, you know, go out somewhere, go out to dinner, go to a restaurant, and he said, just get up and announce yourself, let everybody know who you are, and tell them it's their lucky night that uh, you can lay down a hand, and uh, just Everybody, you know, I said, you're a bad guy, you're picking up your head. You know, and I have, I, you know, I have, I have Virgil there with me. Virgil will go around and pick up all the checks. And I go up to the, you know, the counter, count down the $100 bills, they give me a receipt. I take the receipt back to the office, and just give me more money. When you talk about social media, that would spread like, wow, man, that guy really, that guy really is ready. Yeah, that was all. This is what. While Virgil went and picked up everyone's checks, would he also like eat some of the leftovers? <laughs> <laughs> your uh, your travel changed though too. It's I heard a story that you actually started. You were always flying first class at that point. Like it was not even a question. You always. The, the, the whole idea of this said uh, we are going to the, obviously the sports entertainment. We're going to try to make the public believe the best of our ability that you're really that guy. So first class after everywhere you go. And back then, the only other two guys that got that kind of treatment were Paul, Hogan, and Andre. I like, I like how you had to... Andre is 7 4 4 You didn't go and go to I like how you had to tell me it was, Hulk, it was Hogan for Hulk. Hulk yeah, Hogan. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, not Hulk Johnson. But, uh, and so, yeah. Everywhere they would see me, people would see me and say, well, yeah, the guys are always in first class. 
had limousine service from the airport to the hotel, back to the, you know, to the buildings and back. And so every time the public saw me, they would see the security will. Part of Virgil's job was, again, at the airports, get the bags, all that stuff. So this made it as real as he could. And they even put me on a segment of, you guys, the TV show Lifestyles and Rich and Famous? Yeah. Robin Leach is British, yeah? And, and, you know, and so while we're doing the show, I said, you know, Robin, this isn't really my house. He said, no, don't worry about it. We do this all the time. No <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Uh, it was Vince's house, actually. So I go home and people go, man, you know, Ted, you know, where's that house? <laughs> It's not here in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to the dollar bill in the uh, wrestlers' mouths. And, like, there had to have been a good story of somebody choking or some, there's some, something weird that happened with either the dollar in their mouth or giving away the money to children or something like that. You got a good job for us? Anyone ever choke on a hundred dollar bill? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, nothing like that. I mean, I never, you know, it's like, I didn't just, like, I didn't, I don't want to be a prankster. Right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have it. That goes from the front of that. All right. Um, and then, you got the million dollar bell. Like, did you, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, there's stories that like you were, you were, you know, one day you were supposed to be the uh, WWF champion or something like that. Yeah, the original thought after they introduced me. I mean, again, yeah, WrestleMania three took place. Sets an indoor world tennis record. You know, Hogan beats Andre, and then they never touched again. They never got, they never got in the ring together again until uh, Saturday Night Main Event, which in the United States was the first time that professional wrestling was on live coast to coast network television. So it was a big deal. Uh, but the story behind the story, you know, it's not just a rematch between Paul and Andre. I said, I'm going to prove to the world that I can buy everything, including the world title. I hired Andre, he's going to be voted, and sell me. You know, that's the whole concept. And so originally the thought was go to WrestleMania 4 in some underhanded way. I went. And, uh, but actually, Pat Patterson, who was this a right hand man, came to me one day and he said, Look, he said, Let me ask you a question, Ted. He said, What's going to make people hate you more? If we do what, you know, it's kind of like the normal thing, so underhanded the way you win, you know, when you go and wrestle, uh, you have to run with Hogan, uh, and then you drop the belt because obviously then uh, the whole emphasis on him. You want your champion to be a good guy. You can do that. He said, or he said, you don't win the tournament. And in your arrogance, you create your own title and wear it to the ring every night. And as soon as he said that, I said, do that. <laughs> what an arrogant, you know, blah, 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 right? Maybe so bad. So yeah, I probably would have made a good much better game. Yeah. What, a, a what a run as a million dollar champion. <laughs> <laughs> Then where are you at on the internet? On the internet, milliondollarman.com. Uh, and I'm also, I also have a ministry that probably gets where I want to be. Heart of David Ministry.com. So thank you guys today. Everybody's got a price to make off. Ha, 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 ha.